Is being a good man enough? Is being a good man enough? The answer is yes. Are you going to, and ladies, so I gotta ask you a question. Are you going to pass up a good man for your preference? I'm sorry, you're not ready for a relationship. Let another, let alone something real. Stick to dating for a good time versus a long time. You're going to get us together, I hope. Now, the thing about this, ladies, is this. That's all you need. That's really all you need. You need a good man because a good man is going to make sure your standards are met. I'll say that again. A good man is going to make sure your standards are met. What does that mean? What are your three standards? And we'll go in details about this during the marriage series next month. When it comes to finding your significant other, you should have three standards on standby on what you expect from that person. Your non-negotiables. Some people say, oh, he needs to make six figures. That's a preference. He needs to be six feet tall. That might be out of his control, but that's a preference. He needs to have a six pack. That's well within his control, but still a preference. He needs to be able to blow my back out. Um, that might not even be in his control, but who knows? But nevertheless, that's still a preference. You need to focus on your standards. What makes him a man? How does he conduct himself? How do he carry himself? What's his decision making? Uh, looking like how's his leadership school skills all these are standards regarding men and there's plethora of other things that are non-negotiable non-negotiable you got to be able to that excuse me you got to make sure you could dif differentiate what a standard is and what your preference is the problem is people mix those things together or people think your preferences are your standards and that's why you get the felt results that you've been getting because you don't know how to Put one on different sides of the paper. Oopsie. Now, for this topic, Anton asked Bruiser a question, and of course, Bruiser is such a deflector, but uh, shout out to Bruiser. Oh, and another thing with that video, um, someone may note that one of those women in that video is Bruiser's wife. So I'm going to hold my comments about anybody from that video because I don't want to be uh, disrespectful to that man's wife. Now, Anton asked Bruiser a question. Should a good Muslim man marry a good Christian woman? The answer is no. Unequal yoke. To Anton's point, you have to be, you don't have to, uh, is good is being good man enough no it comes with other things and that's where they kept on adding different variables to the conversation it's like no just stick with the basics like what is a good man a good man is somebody that can uh, meet your standards that's what a good man is. a great man is all the extra stuff that Anton was talking about but for a good man somebody that can meet your standards now some people, now Bruce is saying, yeah, he could do that. It doesn't matter. Just that it's there. Look, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm a firm believer. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I need a bottle of water, but I'll get in a minute. I'm a firm believer. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So is that woman in there. That's why, that's one of the reasons why we're married. Has she been any other religion or had any other beliefs? We are not going to be married. Because we got to make sure we're compatible and we're on the same page. So you could be a good, good man. You could be a good religious man, but you need to date within your religion, within your spirituality to avoid any compromises in the road. Cause although those are, that's a good man and a good woman, that's gonna lead to a compromise down the road cause of different beliefs.